welcome to Spear Medical Education. I'm Eric and today we're going to be doing uh, another one of our skills videos. So these are live uh, demonstration videos away from our usual screencasts where we will demonstrate some practical sort of medical skills. And today we're going to be looking at the, the nasopharyngeal airway or the, the NPA. Uh, what this is, is a, a, a long plastic tube that we pass through the patient's nose and it sort of sits around the back of the throat area. And the intention for this is that it will um, it will basically maintain a, a patent airway. So if there's any sort of swelling or collapse that occurs along the length of the tube on the inside, we've still got a hollow sort of airway that, that connects from the patient out to the, to the outside world. So we've got a patent airway. So they come in different sizes. Um, for, for adults, they, they tend to be sixes and sevens. Um, they, they do come in pediatric sizes, but they're, they're very, very uncommon in, uh, in pre-hospital care. And certainly um, it's not something that, that I see much of as a paramedic. Um, we tend to just sort of resort down to, to uh, other oral pharyngeal airways or more advanced airways for paediatrics that need it. So generally you'll see them in a six or a seven. Um, general rule of thumb is that a size six will fit an average size female and a size seven will fit an average size male. Obviously, there's always going to be patients that, that fall outside of those brackets. So we need to know how to actually size one of these devices up. And we do that simply by taking one end of the device, the flared end, which is going to be sitting proud of the nose and outside um, sort of the patient. And we, we're just going to put it on the tip of the nose there. And with, the, with the, uh, the terminal end, the bottom end, what we're aiming for is the tragus of the ear, which is just about here or the earlobe, either technique is fine. And all we're doing is just passing it down. And as you can see, actually, this sits far beyond the tragus, so it's a bit too big. So we're gonna go down a size to a size six. And actually here, we're sitting on the nose and this sits nicely on the tragus. So this is the size that we're gonna use for this patient. Now we need to know when we wouldn't use it. Now, there is a caution, there is a, a, a be aware of, but not a strict do not use um, warning for, for what we call basal skull fractures. So these are, are sort of uh, internal fractures within the skull uh, where there is a small chance that by passing this device into the nose, we might introduce it to where the, the, the sort of brain is in your skull. Now, the big issue of this is pre-hospitally, we don't have x-ray vision. So we're not going to be able to, to know for certain whether this patient's got one of these types of fractures. And actually, if we look at the primary evidence where this contraindicate or this caution came from, sorry, it even states in that primary research uh, that examined two case studies of where this, this apparently had happened for real. Um, they even said pre-hospitally, you're probably not going to know. And actually, if this is your only airway option, then the patient needs an airway. The patient's going to die. They're much more likely to die from not having a secured airway than they are this potentially tickling their brain or being introduced to where their sort of cranial vault is. So it is a caution in patients where we suspect there's those internal skull fractures, but not a strict do not use. The only true contraindication that you've got for this device is if you've got significant nasal trauma and you can't actually see where you're going to be inserting it. So if you can't, if you've got sort of massive trauma around here and you physically can't see a hole to put it in, then we're obviously not going to put it in. But whilst it's still identifiable, these are OK to be inserted. So one thing to note when we are inserting them, the end is sort of beveled. It's not flat. It sort of bevels off a little bit like uh, like, a, like a hypodermic needle for wood. And what we're aiming to do is the, the inner surface of this bevel, we're aiming to have that against the septum of the nose. So the septum of the nose is this middle bit here. So this beveled end, this side needs to be facing inwards towards the center of the nose as we advance it. So we're gonna lubricate it first. So we take it out of its packaging, we put a bit of lubricant on the packet, and then we're just gonna smother the length or lightly cover, should I say, not some other, lightly cover the, uh, the length of the tube, making sure that we don't stick any in the end here that might block it later. So we, we keep it, we, we don't put any loop here, we just lightly cover the length of the tube itself. So we're gonna identify our nostril. Generally, you just wanna have a look from this side of the patient and identify which is the bigger looking nostril. Um, if they both look about the same, it's not that much of a, a drama, just sort of pick one basically. So we're gonna get the bevel, remember against the septum of the nose. And actually the temptation is to go upwards, thinking that's actually the direction your nose goes. It doesn't actually, it goes inwards a little bit. 
and then it actually goes, uh, well, once you're actually in the nasal, nasal cavity, um, your, your sort of direction of travel is straight backwards, straight down the length of the face. So all we're gonna do is advance it in a straight line until it's all the way in. And it sits like that. So it sits just proud of the nose. Most devices have some sort of, um, some sort of, uh, sort of flared end that stops it getting past all the way into the nose. And then that's it completely inserted. Now, when you are inserting it, you might get a little bit of light bleeding, um, but, but nothing more complicated than that, really. If you really need to with a patient, you can insert two of these. Uh, so you can have one next to this one as well. So that's it. That's the nasal pharyngeal airway. Uh, if you've liked the video and you found it helpful, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And if you've got any questions, just fire them into the comments and we're more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much.